Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. session of the 2023 Open Simulator Community Conference. Now, we have a special note for this session, so please be prepared to alt-click on our speaker, Kelso Uxle, to see his amazing entrance. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, The Art of Smoothly Moving Objects in OpenSim. Our speaker is Kelso Uxley. Kelso and his partner, Dabici Stralino, share a grid that recreates the changing seasons of Eastern Canada. Kelso puts magic in the builds through his scripting skills. Please check out the website found at opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. This session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send them to o at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome, everyone. Alt click our speaker and let's begin the session. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, delighted uh, to uh, make you this presentation, The Art of Smoothly Moving Object in OpenSim. Uh, this is a showcase um, of, uh, of a scripted object. So the, the, uh, the keyframe is a concept that is uh, borrowed from traditional cartoon animation technique. Uh, which represent the ends of a movement uh, to which intermediate images are subsequently added. The image that you see on the screen shows three keyframes, and the uh, illustrations that are in gray were added uh, subsequently. In the case of uh, 3D environments like uh, Second Life or OpenSim, it is the simulator which cas calculate, calculate the intermediate images. So from a starting position and orientation, the simulator uh, calculates how to move an object and at what speed to take it to the position and orientation of the next frame within a given time. So to make it shorter, uh, today I will use the abbreviation KFM a lot. So I'm talking about the KFM function, the KFM object or KFM script. So a single keyframe looks like this at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it's a, a triplet of the three values. There is a vector, it's a position vector. Then there is a rotation, which is the orientation of the object, and there is a timing. So when uh, we call the function, we just, uh, in a script, we, we, we uh, set uh, his name, set keyframe motion. And then between the parentheses, there are two lists. There is a list of, uh, of uh, keyframes. Uh, that list can be very, very long. And uh, there is a list of options. So the way it reads is that uh, if you want to specify a list of position, uh, each keyframe is interpreted relative to the previous transform of the object. That is, uh, as an example, uh, move the object one meter to the north while rotating the y-axis by 40 degrees and do that in two seconds. So what's important here is that the KMF function never refers to region's coordinate. One of the advantage of um, uh, keyframe key uh, motion is that uh, it uh, bypasses a major timer constraint in scripted motion in OpenSim. One problem we have in OpenSim uh, for scripted movement is that uh, the, the timer cannot run faster than half a second. So there are lots of scripts that move object fluidly in Second Life, uh, but don't work very well in OpenSim. In addition, since timers consume a lot of server resources, it's always best when you can avoid them when, when it's possible. So the KMF function 
can use the server internal clock without spanning any additional timer process, and that's a big advantage. In addition, the timing of the, the, the key clock is not limited to half a second. It can go much, much faster. So this is also excellent. Uh, caveats, when you run uh, scripts that uh, have the, the key MF function, collisions with other objects are always ignored by the simulator and by all scripts. So an object, a key, a key FM object, will pass through walls, through objects, even under the, uh, the region uh, terrain sheet. So consequently, when you want to deploy objects uh, that uh, move around in your region, you have to be careful in the way you uh, lay out the trajectories. Otherwise, your, uh, your script, your, uh, your key MF object will go through walls. So it's not a problem when you want to uh, deploy things like birds or fish because there's a lot of empty space, but it's so often problematic for animals like horses, dogs, etc. So examples of use. This is the part of the script, of the of the talk. Well, I will uh, uh, need to move, uh, and so be ready to. Uh, follow my, my, my avatar. So the first example that I will uh, show you is a very simple example. It's the, the big, big red door behind me. This is the first script that I wrote with the function. It's simply an open, and it closes the door. So the door opens, and then after five seconds, it will close by itself. That was my first script. I think it was back in uh, uh, 2016 when I, when I started to explore the use of this function. Uh, the second one, somebody clicked on it apparently. Whoa. Uh, please <laughs> don't touch it. Um, it's a double door swing. And uh, I need to uh, reset it. So please uh, refrain from clicking on, on, on the object. Ah, it has moved. OK, we'll just uh, run it that way. Uh, it's a double, it's a, it's a swing door. So if um, I click on it from here, you will see the two are opening. And uh, if, uh, if I click from, uh, from the other side, Somebody else clicked on it, so I guess I will have to uh, change the script a little, prevent multiple clicking at once. So that's the ID. The next uh, script that I want to demonstrate is the use of a ladder. So I'm moving here to uh, this side of the, the screen. If I double click on this ladder, my avatar will quickly jump uh, on, on the top and climb up, climb, climb up. If I double click at the top, I'm climbing down. Now I'll show you how it works. I will first reveal an object that is uh, normally invisible uh, by setting it semi-transparent. and moving it sideways a little bit. Just a moment, I need to put local, it is. So you see now I have two objects. This uh, semi-transparent prim normally covers the, the, the ladder. The ladder itself is not <coughs> scripted. The object that's scripted is the invisible prim. If I click on it, you will see what's happening. Uh, the, 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 the prim will shrink to about the size uh, of, um, to a much uh, smaller size, and then will transport me to the top. Look at this. Same things to, 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 to come down. What's nice about this script is that um, 
uh, it does not need to be reset if you change the position of an object and you change its size and its orientation. Uh, let me see, I will turn it sideways completely. Uh, and uh, make it a bit shorter so that don't, I don't fall upside the, the stage. And bingo, you will see it's working again. So that uh, concludes this one. Um, the next uh, example that I want to show are pendulums. So I'm going to the big pendulum uh, to the right, to the left of the, of the stage, and I'm sitting on it. This object is the only one for which I have not written the script. The script is coming from uh, the examples of uh, the, wiki, the Second Life wiki on the function. Uh, it's, a, it's a library of different types of, uh, of uh, uh, pendulums, and I thought it was great, so I'm just uh, using it to show you. The first one that I want to show is a top, uh, top swing. Nice top. The next one is a bubble head. Stop. Next one is a regular swing. This one is very nice. It's a tire swing. And the last one is a tangle swing. Done. There is in this library also a, a script for a rocking boat, but um, the one I will show you, which I wrote, is uh, much better. So we have now this big uh, blue boat in front of uh, this, the, the scene. You see uh, if I, it's already uh, uh, moving a little. Uh, I will... Uh, there are three settings. Uh, I, can, I can make it uh, move a little bit stronger. And the last one is severe. It's almost like a, a, a storm. So I'll put it back on gentle. This uh, can also be used for floating ice. So it's a, it's a nice example of a, a script that uh, work uh, on, on Harmony. The next example are guided itineraries. Uh, actually, the, the butterfly rider that I use when I, I came uh, on the stage is an example of uh, a guided itinerary. But uh, it's, it's hard to show on the screen, uh, so I, I'll just show you a few uh, examples of um, things that we have available in, um, in the region of Ali. So you've, uh, you have here our KMF touring station. There are several rides. You can do uh, sleigh rides. You can do uh, cross-country uh, uh, ski tour. There are seven kilometers of cross-country trails, all operated with uh, KMF script, scripts. Uh, here's an example of my partner, Dabichi, and her dog uh, doing a nice uh, trail in, in the night, at night. Um, we have a KMF chairlift. There's another bigger one that, for which I have no picture, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a way to go back. Uh, in the summer times, we have, and in, in other seasons, we have uh, lots of boat tours. 
And the fall, we have a hell of a bike uh, ride uh, tour. It's the fastest that I have ever made. It's really uh, amazing. And a spectacular, spectacular one penny farthing on a steel wire. Here's a steel wire that, a wire that is a half a kilometer long on which you can, uh, you can uh, travel at no risk. <laughs> A uh, next example that uh, I want to show you now are tracker objects. So the first one here is uh, a little tracker object, uh, a little robot that's uh, circling around me. This is uh, a classic of uh, Second Life Reinterpreted. It's uh, from uh, Ali Arai, and uh, she was a marvelous builder. Uh, for several years in uh, in open sim uh, sorry in second life and um, i would like to draw your attention to a presentation in this conference tomorrow afternoon by um uh, kayaker magic and uh, ada radius uh, they're building a library of, of all the objects of uh, uh, this uh, marvelous uh, uh, builder and uh there is a grid dedicated to the collection. So I will donate the script for the collections because this, uh, the original script from Second Life is the perfect example of a script that doesn't work in, in OpenSim because of the clock. So I've written a new, uh, a new script for that and added a few twists. For example, uh, the, scan, the, the, uh, the little uh, droid can uh, scan object. Uh, Yeah, it's just scanning me now. <laughs> and uh, one important point is that uh, there is no timer involved in making that script run. There is also no timer for the, the, the chatter sounds that uh, it uh, emits at uh, randomly. So it's kind of nice. Uh, next. I want to tr show you a very different kind of uh, tracker object. Uh, if you watch behind me, uh, in a few seconds, you should see a big eye. Ignore. So this uh, eye is also a follower, but instead it, it, it follows the position and the orientation of my camera. So if I go and take a look at the Lear, uh, you see the big eye following uh, my camera and uh, I can go and do uh, a tour uh, in the region. So this is my camera traveling now, and uh, you see what's possible. The HUD that I wear um, allows me to rest different kind of objects, so I could replace the big eye by something like a, a ghost or a, a big a flying pumpkin. I'm not going to do that to now, but I will uh, uh, do something else. I will rest the NPC. So now I have uh, a copy of myself uh, that can fly around and uh, uh, talk to visitors because um, I can uh, communicate through chat on channel zero at any distance in, in a sim. Next, next should be okay. Next is uh, the little robot in front of the uh, uh, in the center of the stage. I suggest you uh, click on it uh, with your Alt key so uh, you you will be able to follow it. Starting motion. 
this robot um, is not a follower. It uh, decides by itself where to go. Uh, he has only instructions to move in a radius right now of uh, eight by eight, uh, and uh, with changing altitude of 1.5 meters. So, but it, it recalculates constantly uh, new uh, direction, and um, I can. Uh, I can turn uh, shortly uh, a ribbon trail so that you see the nice curved path that it's doing. But uh, it's uh, filling up your screen, so <laughs> I'll probably uh, stop it now. Next, I'm going to mention a... Um, A feature that's really important, but uh, barely documented. There are events, moving start and moving end, moving end, that are not explicitly mentioned in the function documentation. And uh, it's a pity because it took me years to discover that they existed uh, in that context. They add tremendous flexibility to KFM scripts. They make it possible, for instance, to execute other blocks of commands at specific times during a run without having to resort to uh, timers. You can change animation, change position and angle of the camera, make a comment in chat, things like these. I'll now show you uh, uh, how it works. The trick to uh, make use of uh, this is to um, split uh, your list in keyframes in a series of smaller lists and call them in a user-defined function. When they're called in sequence, each of these smaller lists will trigger a moving start and a moving end event. So instead of executing a single function, you, you execute several. And with the counter, you know uh, which one to run next. Here is uh, how the code looks like. On the top, you have a single line set keyframe motions with a list of five keyframes. Um, instead of running that, I'm doing what's in the, the, in the lower part of the screen. Uh, first, I define an integer I step to keep track of where I am. And uh, the, the first, the step zero uh, is only one frame. At the end of this frame, it, uh, it, it, it will, um, execute, it, it will increase the counter by one and um, execute step one. At the end of step one, it will increase again the counter by one and execute step two. So I'm going to show you how it works uh, using the, uh, the prim that uh, is right here in front of me. I'm going to reset that. So when I will uh, sit on the sprim, my avatar will take a uh, meditation position, hold it for three seconds, then change animation and start moving, wait for three seconds again, and come back. So here it is, waiting for three seconds. Changing animation, moving, waiting for three seconds, and coming back. So the five keyframes were executed that way. And without timer, I was able to synchronize the change of animation very precisely. I'll do it a, a second time. Wait three seconds, change animations and fly, wait three seconds come back and eject. So most of these objects are uh, available in the booth, so you can uh, get them. The, the, uh, the scripts are, are free to use. Uh, find out more, 
If you want to know how to build those objects and uh, study the functions, I uh, will uh, uh, offer a series of course, courses, initially in French, um, on the, uh, the Atlas grid. The dates will be announced later in the Francophone groups on OpenSIM World. And if there is sufficient demand, uh, I will offer the course in English at a later date. I'd like at this point, thanks people who have inspired me over the years by their scripts, uh, Dora Gustafsson, Kayaka Magic, Ferd Federics, and Gimiza Series, and Akira Komarov. All their scripts have helped me to develop my own expertise over the years. That concludes what I wanted to uh, tell today. If there are any questions, I'd be delighted to uh, answer them. I have not seen any questions yet. Um, any questions for our speaker? And you can come by his booth in OSCC Expo Zone 3 to pick up some of these objects and to talk about the content. Well, thank you, Kelso, for an informative and interesting presentation. You know, as a reminder to our audience, we will want to check out the conference.opensimulator.org website to see what's coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session. We will begin at 9.30 a.m. in this uh, keynote region, and it's entitled Expanding Virtual Experiences with EEP Creations. Please enjoy a short break. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC Expo uh, poster, uh, poster Expo in the OSCC Expo Zone 3 region to find accompanying information on the presentations and to explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2, along with our sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again for our speaker and to you, the audience.